Droners, guess what? A list, and a great one at that. Kind of weird too, actually. This one is about drones influenced by nature. And if you've been paying attention to Droner News, you'll see there's been some kind of a pattern about drones copying nature, and there's a good reason for it. Nature is better at flying than drones thus far. So let's get into the top five drones influenced by nature. Coming in at number five, we have Dr. Dan Edwards of the Naval Research Laboratory, 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 was looking for a way to improve the flight times of his fixed wing drones. And you know, they go up and they're just like, eh, they don't really stay up that long. They kind of only work with the propulsion system that they have and that's it, battery goes out, they're done. And he was kind of watching like vultures and like other really large wing uh, birds fly around and he was watching, he's like, they go, they move around when they're in the air, they're way up there, they're moving around and they keep going up. And he figured out, it's like, well, they're actually moving towards the hot pockets of air. And he was like, well, what if I have a drone that has thermal sensors on it that moves towards the hot pockets of air, and let's see how long it can stay in the air. And the results were staggering. The dude, like, his drones went from being able to fly for like a few minutes to like up to five hours. Just from jumping from hot pocket to hot pocket, there's a joke there, I don't get it. But it's jumping from hot pocket to hot pocket, and it really is amazing. Like, this is what fixed wing drones can do, and this is what's gonna allow things like the Facebook internet drone, and other drones like that to be able to stay in the air for longer periods of time. New technology, good things for drones. Coming in at number four is the BatBot. We talked about it before on Droner News, and it's still amazing. In the University of Illinois, they, they pretty much were like, we want to design a more maneuverable drone, and fixed wing, of course. And they were looking at what's the most maneuverable things in nature, in the air, that is, and that would be bats. Um, I didn't know that, actually, but bats. Bats are super maneuverable in the air. They can manipulate themselves and do all kind of crazy stuff. So they pretty much built a drone that looks just like a bat. Flaps like a bat, moves like a bat, you know, it's like, it looks like a bat. So it's a bat bot, that's what I call it. And it works. It works really, really well. As you can see, it's like creepy how well it works. Um, but this could be a really good thing for like us being able to have to like, honestly, I kind of see this working more for like racing drones. Like if you want to make it something that if they can go as fast as those racing drones, they'll be able to get into tighter spots quicker and turn harder than the racing drones now. So maybe it's a new different type of racing drone or there's probably a lot of other applications, but I just want to go fast. All right, so coming to number three, everybody's heard of Captain Sully. He's the guy who landed the plane in the Hudson River in New York and saved all those people's lives. A lot of people don't know what actually caused that plane to have issues in the first place, um, is that his engine got caught in a flock of birds. Obviously it destroyed the birds, but it destroyed the engine as well. And the guy had to land it. And there's, that actually inspired people to be able to create a row bird. And what the row bird does is it simulates a bird of prey, like a, rap, like a raptor, like a, a hawk or an eagle or something like that, that preys on smaller birds that are the ones that get caught in jet engines and hang around at airports. And this is being developed in the Netherlands. And they figured that, well, not only does it work, it works so well that it's almost like herding sheep. Like they can determine where they want these birds to go based upon where they put their robo bird. And the robo bird works pretty simply. They just copied what a, uh, like, like when a hawk flaps his wings like, made it into a drone, and then just have it flying over the area and fly into predatory spaces of like, oh, I'm above these other birds and I can get them, and they run. So the company Clear Sight Felucia, so the company Clear, so the company Clear, so the company Clear Flight Solutions has taken this to the next level. And honestly, it looks really cool. It's like, I think it'd be fun to fly it. It flies autonomously and all that kind of stuff, but it'd be even more fun to be able to chase birds around with a drone that they think is a bigger bird. Number two, squishy drone. Researchers in Switzerland were looking for a way to make their drones more resilient. And what they did is they actually looked at insects because they're using smaller drones. And they're like, why do insects never really have problems? Like, you know, like if you ever batted a fly or something like that, you hit it and it still just keeps flying. It could run into a wall and it just keeps flying. It's because it's squishy. That's why. It's a squishy thing that can just bounce back, take impact. And they're like, well, our drones should be able to do that too to be able to make them more resilient. And that's what they did. They created a squishy drone that bounces back from whatever impact happens. Like, as you can see, they're flying it into walls. They're flying it into everything, and it doesn't matter. It just bounces off, just put its right side up, and it's going to fly again. I think this is really cool when it comes to application of all drones because it makes them safer to hit things, as in, like, won't damage property or people as much because they're squishing on them instead of just hitting. And it also keeps it so your drones, if you crash them, will be safer. I feel like this is a win all the way around, and I hope companies like DJI and Unique will incorporate this into their future designs. And coming in at number one is the RoboBee. Researchers at Harvard developed a RoboBee to be able to replace regular bees because we're killing them all with pesticides. And they ran into a lot of challenges that they really needed to lean on nature to help them with. One of the biggest challenges is being able to power something that small for that long period of time to be able to fly because it's so small and how do you fit a battery on that? And what they figured out is that they can run a little tiny bit of electricity through an electrostatic patch on the drone and make it stick to pretty much anything. Think like 
uh, static electricity balloons in your hair. Kind of like that. Hair, yeah, I know. I get it, don't worry. Um, <laughs> either way, these bees, uh, to me, are absolutely hilarious to watch because it's just like, yo, look, they're pollinating. It's just like they're literally just crashing these, these little microchones into these flowers. It's like, doosh. Yeah, it's pollinated. It's fine. It's working just like regular bees where a regular bee gently lands and like touches it and grabs it out. Um, either way, maybe it's uh, something that can save us all, save humanity when it comes down to it. But I'm happy that we're actually thinking of ways to replace all the damage that we do in nature with things that are inspired by nature. It's kind of like an uh, Inception-like thing. Either way, check it out. Droners, thank you for checking out this drone list video. And if you want to see more of those, you can click here. Or if you want to see the dopest intro video that any drone person has ever made, it's right here. As always, make sure that you support us by subscribing or checking out our Patreon page because it's just lit. And make sure that you stay fly.